from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. It's showtime. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. I spend my day, I must tell you, answering the telephone. How many of you are like me? Phone rings. People want to know if uh, anyone we know has been fired lately. People want to know if if I've heard anything about them being fired. Obviously, people know where I am because I step in here every day and you hear me, so you know I'm working. But I get calls about whether jobs are available, who's hiring, who's about to get fired, rumors about who's about to get fired, and they are from uh, not not just one business. It's every business where anybody I know works, everywhere. I mean, I know people in all walks of life, stockbrokers, people who work at ad agencies. I know people who are writers, actors. I know people in the banking business. Attorneys. And everybody's getting hit. Everybody's getting hit. Many of them got hit before the holidays. Some are still finding out their fate. In our ongoing look at uh, how bad things are getting, you see today Macy's is closing 11 stores? Macy's? One of them in downtown L.A., now, if I recall correctly, that store has been around so long, it was once a Bullock's before uh, it became Macy's. Macy's owned the old department store chain called Bullock's. And uh, they're closing that store in the Ernst & Young building in downtown L.A. Wow. So I don't know about you, but every day I'm getting calls from people. And they're just trying to find out who's getting axed. They want to find out if they're getting axed. Have I heard anything about them? Has anybody called me? Has anybody told me anything? (laughs) And it's people in every line of work, every business you can name. You know, and I'm home during the day, and a lot of these people are at work trying to make uh, phone calls on their lunch hour, on their breaks. (laughs) Holy cow. Sometimes I know something. Mostly I don't. But uh, people just want to vent. Some people I talk to are very angry. Why are they angry? Well, because the way they see it, they didn't do anything wrong. They showed up at work every day, never called in sick, did good work. Went above and beyond, worked extra hours, worked weekends, sometimes traveled to other cities. They did whatever they had on their plate and then some. And they still have to worry in this environment about whether they're going to get fired. So there's real anger out there. Now I tell people there's no reason to be angry. Uh, There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, this is a very serious situation we're in, and it affects all walks of life. Anybody might get their ass kicked here. Anybody. But it doesn't matter what I tell people. Some of them are angry. Some of them plot revenge. Some of them have already engaged in that kind of behavior. They have, they've gotten their revenge. Some people acted as company whistleblowers. I'm telling you right now, I get so many of these calls. Uh, it's not one or two now and then. I know one person who acted as a company whistleblower. When they got laid off, they called all the enforcement authorities that regulate that particular business. 
and told them all the bad things that the company had been doing. I mean, just imagine, for example, if you worked for a law firm and the law firm canned you. So you called the Bar Association and you reported all the attorneys who did bad things that you knew about. You know, whistleblowers are covered under the law. You know, you can't get fired anymore. They already fired you. So let's just say I know at least one person, whatever business he was in, who once he got canned, called some of the law enforcement people and regulatory agencies and said, uh, hey, uh, don't tell anybody my name, but uh, I know dirt about this company. I know other people who have simply called me up on the phone and said, I hate my boss. I want to do something to hurt him, you know, on the level of putting sugar in somebody's gas tank. Those people, I don't think, necessarily mean it. I don't think they'll actually do it. They're just venting. But I listen to them vent. Some people who sound to me a bit unstable sound like they, I don't know whether to believe them or not. But when you look at people who've lost their retirement, they've lost their job, they're losing their house, they're in debt, some people are really desperate. Some people might do God knows what. I am not surprised when I hear stories on CNBC during the day that business is bad for just about everybody except gun manufacturers, locksmiths, and people who make locks of keys. Privatized prison systems, <laughs> companies that privately operate state and county prison systems. Oh, yes, Dean, I'm sure the repossession business is doing very well as well. Collection agencies, oh, yeah. But uh, you've got people who um, are so angry. They talk about doing unstable things. And, uh, you don't know if they're kidding or not. Let's just say I wouldn't want to repeat those. My point to you is this. I know how scary it is. I know how freaked out you are. And I know that sometimes people want to get revenge or they, they feel vengeful. I'm wondering if that's you. I'm wondering if you are feeling vengeful against an employer or a former employer because of what's going on out there. You feel you didn't deserve to get fired. You didn't deserve to take the 20% pay cut. You didn't deserve to get your vacation yanked out from under you. Or your 401k. I read today that the Carpenters Union, and I'm sure those of you who are members of the Carpenters Union, you, you, you know there's a union that is called the Carpenters Union. They apparently invested all, did I read this right in the paper today? They invested all, all of their funds with one Bernard Madoff. And so uh, they haven't sifted through the wreckage of that one yet. But it could be every carpenter out there who's a member of the union who's been contributing to the pension just got effed in the A badly. If you're angry... If you are feeling vengeful, if you have done something vengeful, if you have gotten revenge, I want to hear all about it right now. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas, Likas Show. Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's right. And um, we're talking about people who... I feel they've just gotten effed by the financial crisis. And they are thinking about revenge against their boss. Is that you? Do tell. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Lee on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom. Lee. Long time, first time. Good Thank to meet you. Brother. Los Angeles right here. What's happening, boss? Not much. Hey, I am trying to get some revenge right now, my boss. I was working in construction in L.A., building a police station, $36 million police station, finished it in June. 
was sent back to the estimating department to work for a couple months until we got ourselves back on our foot. Finally landed a job on the estimating and uh, didn't really get along with the lead estimator. Two weeks later, I was laid off. They said there just wasn't enough work for me. I knew it was a very specific thing because there's at least 20 other really bad guys that are still with the company. But I worked my ass. I, I mean, I superseded these guys, but they, they're still employed. And I, it just boggles me. It boggles me. I, all right. And, and you are feeling vengeful? I'm feeling very vengeful. I mean, when I was working there, I saw so much. I mean, I saw, like, drinking alcohol during work and a lot of bid shopping, things that were not really up to par with the construction industry. And I'm ready to throw that guy under the bus because it was I, I believe he was partial to the reason why I lost my job. Wow. It, it, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's crazy, Tom. So, it's when, crazy. When, so when you say you're vengeful, that means you're going to you feel the need to get revenge. Uh, what uh, kind of revenge? Well, basically, I've written a, a, a three-page letter to the owner of the company describing all the discrepancies I've had with my super, supervisor. And I'm getting ready to shoot this to him and human resources. And, and in this letter, it identifies a lot of, like, company policies and, you know, just construction policies, things that basically are illegal. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull the trigger, shoot it over through human resource. Everybody in the company knows what this guy's about and how he's treated everybody. And when I was working with him, he used to burn us, make us work, you know, 16 hours a day. And nobody knew about any of this. I mean, we had a, a very successful estimating department, one of the most competitive in the world in construction. But nobody knew the inner workings of what really went on. And I'm about to spill the beans just because I'm a disgruntled worker. I didn't feel like I, didn't, I lost my job for no reason. Wow. Oh, I know you're not alone. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jose on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. Okay. I, I was just listening to the radio here, and I see that you, uh, I've been in a union for like 19 years now. I'm in the Carpenters. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say what local, but uh, I've been out of work for like the last six months on disability, and I'm just finding out that... Uh, you said we got F and A real hard. Well, yeah, let me tell about? you. Let me tell you exactly because I, I want to get the specifics on this for you, okay. and it may or may not affect you. But I've got the specifics on this. Uh huh. It says here the financial. This is from CNBC's website, by the way, CNBC dot com, uh -huh. and it's uh, Charlie Gasparino, who's a reporter on camera for CNBC. And here's what it says: the financial carnage coming out of the Bernard Madoff investment scandal is now spreading from charities and wealthy individuals to labor union pension funds. In recent days, several have fessed up to their members their significant exposure to Madoff's investment scheme, which will result in massive losses to their members. CNBC has learned that one union, the Carpenters Union in, this is the Carpenters local in Syracuse, New York, has oh, lost, okay. has lost the majority of the 100 to $150 million, wait, 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 we're not done yet, uh -huh. <laughs> has lost the majority of the 100 to $150 million it had in pension money because of its dealing with Madoff, people close to the matter said. Uh -huh. The union's money manager, J.P. Generet Associates of Syracuse, didn't return a telephone call for comment. The Syracuse Carpenters local isn't alone. Pat Morin business manager of Empire State Carpenters Union, that's all of New York State, is sifting through the wreckage in his own portfolio, which at the end of June had around $800 million in assets under management. Morin says his fund has exposure to Madoff as well, uh, largely the result of consolidation in union pension funds, where locals like Syracuse had transferred money to his oversight. So you see, now what's happened is it's not just Syracuse, it's all of New York State. It says here Syracuse consolidated in June, but that doesn't mean that the Syracuse fund will now be covered by money in the larger pool. Morin says pension assets remain segregated, at least for a period of time, meaning that Syracuse may have to shoulder the entire Madoff hit on its own. Which one person close to the matter said was nearly all the money it had, nearly all the money it had under management. Morin declined to comment on the Syracuse exposure. Another union based in Syracuse, the Plumbers and Steamfitters Local 267, lost a total of forty eight million dollars in a pension fund it had with Madoff, a source told CNBC. That union local was also invested through JP Genrat. 
The labor union exposure to the Madoff Ponzi scheme adds another twist in the scandal, which may be the largest in recent financial history. What I'm saying here is... All right, it's Syracuse. It's New York State. Obviously, there is a national version of the uh, of the uh, uh, Carpenters Union. Uh, uh, you would be well advised to be in touch with uh, your union people, the uh-huh. people who work at your union office, and yeah. verify that you are not going to be touched by this. Yeah. Not that there's much you can do about it, but at least you would know. Well, check this out. I, I about six months ago received some paperwork on the pension, right? Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to check, check some of my hours, and it said if I was to retire right now, I would get all of 215 bucks. I'm like, no, that's a bunch of BS, man. It's like I've been putting too many years, you know, to, to uh, and not all of them were good years, you know. Don't get me wrong on this, but sometimes I didn't work that much. But they didn't have my records from 19, and said joined the union in 92, they had lost six years of my records, and I'm like, how does a how does a place, uh, an organization like the union, how do they lose records? You know, these people are supposed to have it together, you know. <laughs> and, and, and they lost; they just didn't have no track of my hours. So, but they had they had. Uh, I talked to the dispatcher, and he had uh, records of the jobs they sent me to. He had the names and the companies of right. the jobs they sent me to. Some of these companies already went bankrupt. And so it sounds to me like this. It sounds to, to me it. like people like you are going to have to hire attorneys, and if you don't hire them individually, uh, there's going to have to be a class action lawsuit or something like that because uh, I think this is the tip of the iceberg. I really do. By the way, I read about something today called clawbacks. Have you heard about this? Even if your company or your union had been invested in Madoff years ago and got out... You could still be hurt because uh, what they're saying is that the law interprets that money you took out as uh, unseemly gains or whatever. In other words, you got money from the other investors. So essentially, you're part of the fraud, and therefore, you have to pay it back. So even if your pension fund got out of investing with Madoff, your pension fund or whoever you invested uh, with Madoff through may have to take money back from you and pay it to the victims of Madoff. You see what I'm saying? They call them clawbacks. I know this stuff sounds complicated, but you're going to find out about it when they're clawing right back to your wallet. That's when you're going to find out about it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. John in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, John. Hey, I, I just wanted to put my input on this. Uh, I'd actually uh, I kind of fall real in line with this. Uh, with one of the employers that I had worked with before um, was a, uh, a national known uh, satellite installation company. And uh, what happened was they let me go um, for reasons that they wouldn't really disclose, but they were making up a bunch of BS. So I ended up finding out that what the real reason was is that because they it was a lot easier to come in and pay some poor schmo um, bare minimum wage instead of paying me what they were paying. And um, so I ended up finding about it and uh, only decided to be uh, vengeful because um, they tried to um, screw me out of my uh, unemployment. They basically were trying to pro- um, project me as a dirtbag. So I said, you know what, I've had enough of this. I ended up uh, reporting them to OSHA for all the bad things that they were doing, as well as I reported them to... Um, I don't know if I could say it, but a uh, software uh, organization, initials MS, uh-huh. and uh, I ended up reporting them because they were using multiple copies of one uh, thing. So I found out they ended up getting slammed for over $500,000. Really? For a loan, yeah. And you felt real good about that. Oh, oh you you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but I... Uh, this, Long-time listener, first-time caller, and uh, I just want to say it's a pleasure talking to you. And I was wondering if you could take me out to pick your style. I haven't, I don't think I've heard it yet before. Which style? Uh, uh, Halle Berry, Running Into the Kingdom. Halle Berry, followed by Kingdom style. Right, let's see what we got.
Mike is. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show with the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. That means more show. Uh, more time for me to tell you stories like this about Fantasia. Have you heard this? <laughs> I never liked that Fantasia. You know what I'm talking about. Dateline Charlotte, North Carolina. Fantasia Barino. This is from the New York Post. Fantasia Barino, who faces the loss of her $1.3 million home in a debtor's auction set for noon Monday is apparently ignoring the looming legal threat, officials told the New York Post. Says here the inspirational American Idol winner owes a Florida credit company $65,000, money she borrowed in 2006 to pay back taxes she owed the IRS. The singer made a $10,000 payment in August 2007, but she never paid the rest. So the company won the right in court last month to auction off her house for the balance. <laughs> now understand this. The house is worth $1.3 million. Uh, the debt was $65,000. She had paid 10000 So for a $55,000 debt, now the loan company can auction off her house for the balance of course, how much equity does she have in that house? Who even knows? It says here, Mecklenburg County Sheriff's deputies who are responsible for enforcing civil court orders have tried at least a dozen times to reach Marino at the home and by phone, said Sergeant J.W. England, a supervisor of civil judgments. A deputy spoke a couple of times to Marino's mother but never reached the star who appears to be ignoring attempts to save her house, officials said. We try very hard and give the defendant every opportunity to pay, England said yesterday. Over the course of about a year, Barino has never responded to court documents, and no lawyer ever appeared in court to represent her, said Larry Goldman, a Charlotte attorney representing the credit company, which is Broward Energy Management. That's a credit company? Okay. Goldman said... I certainly don't want anyone to lose their house, but as far as I'm concerned, we have a judgment. Marino, 24, has made no payments and filed no documents since the Post, that's the New York Post, reported a court-ordered lien on the property in Charlotte's upscale Piper Glen neighborhood last month. Goldman said he never heard from Marino's representatives until after the judge's order. He said he has since spoken twice with reps who haven't offered to resolve the debt, but they said they'd get back in touch before next Monday. <laughs> Goldman said, my client has continuously asked me why they just won't pay it. I just don't have an answer. Marino's attorney, Gary Greenberg, declined to comment. It's my practice not to talk about client matters, he said. <laughs> Especially when they're so rude. No, he didn't say that. I added that in. Marino's agent, Aaron Cully, referred questions to the singer's publicist, but was unable to provide contact information for that person. <laughs> You'll have to call her publicist. All right, what's the number? I have no idea. <laughs> Marino, who starred as herself in a Lifetime movie chronicling her rags-to-riches story, won the third season of American Idol in 2004. Her fame continued when she landed a role on Broadway in the color purple. But she drew negative publicity after pulling out of the show with no explanation. She later told a magazine that she'd been suffering from a cyst in her throat. No one answered the door at the singer's two-story home where four vehicles were parked outside this week. After the auction comes a 10-day period when anyone can offer a higher upset bid. Depending on how many come in, the actual sale could take months. Once it's final, the new homeowner is responsible for evicting whoever still lives there, England said. You know what? I should buy this house just so I can do a reality show of trying to throw <laughs> Fantasia out. I could make, I could pay the whole cost. If you feel reality show producers, think about this. You buy the house, and your whole reality show is based 
on trying to evict Fantasia from the house. And, of course, you own the property, so you can have shots of the repo guys coming to take her car and all the various people coming to the door. That is solid material. I mean, if it's my responsibility, if I buy the house, it's my responsibility to evict her. I, what, what I, I'm going to call that Mark Burnett on the phone. I'm going to say, hey, I got an idea for you. <laughs> what would we call that show? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I just love this. Says here in 2005, Burrito nearly lost another home she owns in Charlotte, as well as her red $240,000 Mercedes Benz. Mm -hmm. She apparently ignored a lien on that home, valued at $740,000, brought by the Neighborhood Association, after she failed to pay fees and other costs. The case was eventually dismissed, according to court documents. Last year, Marino failed to pay a promissory note on $187,809. But who's counting? She borrowed to buy her Mercedes. The dealership that sold her the car sued, but the matter was resolved. <laughs> Breaking burrito. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's a show. $1.2 million. I think the production cost would be so low. You own the house. Now you set up the camera crews outside and you just spend your time trying to get somebody evicted. And every week there's a new episode trying to get Fantasia to come out. Do we get Bonaducci to host this? Dean, you're a regular deal maker. Let's get Bonaducci to host it. You know, and you, you can show him pumping up and preparing to break the door down and stuff. I mean, this is TV gold. For God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOP is our telephone number. The economy's bad. Lots of people getting fired. Some people have already been fired and are feeling vengeful, like they want to get revenge against their former bosses. Have you done something like that? It's Vlad on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yo, Tommy, is Vladdy. How you doing? All right, Vladdy. Nice to talk to you, man. I've been trying to get a hold of you for a long time. Anyways, let's make this quick here. I live in L.A., right, and I work for this company here. I'm a Russian guy. I was born in the States, but originally from Russia. And me and my buddy, we're two Russian guys. We hard workers. We do our job. We take care of everything. We work really good. We get canned a couple of weeks ago, and I say, what's, what's going on? And we start talking about it, and we find out that me, him, and a couple other Russian guys in our other departments got all fired all of a sudden all the russian people got eliminated out of the company so i said okay we, we we will take care of this so we go and we set up our tools and we do everything and we completely jack all their ladders all their tools everything they show up to work and nothing's there really nothing's there they don't have any more equipment to get to work to do anything so then I'm just like, screw you guys, man. I mean, uh, it must have been about a hundred twenty, hundred forty thousand dollars worth of tools. Now, well, we, aren't we you worried it. that the police are going to show up? I'm not worried about it. I we 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 ain't got no problems with that, man. Trust me. Really? Yeah, yeah. But they're they're feeling it now, so I don't know how they're going to get their jobs done. Where their contracts are getting expired, people are not showing up to finish their their jobs. They're going to lose money every day that the job's not finished. So what's going to eventually happen with the company? What do you think, Tom? They're going down the drain. <laughs> Thank you for that, Vlad. Uh, Theo on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. <laughs> Hello, Theo. Well, sir, um, I used to work at a television station uh, here in the greater Northwest and was relieved of my duties. Um, by a woman who said that my skill set no longer or did not fit the uh, the job anymore, and that was the job that I've been doing for five years. So I uh, just found out that she had kind of a questionable visa <laughs> and have been talking with uh, the fine folks at INS. And, really? Uh, yes, sir. So you called the INS and turned her in. What country is she supposedly from? Uh, she's from India. And she fired you saying your skill set was no longer appropriate, so now the INS is cracking down and they've called her? 
They have uh, a little birdie that is still there has told me that uh, she's looking a little haggard. So uh, I'm not done. <laughs> far, far from it because, uh, you know, the, it was funny. My skill set no longer, my skill set is, is, doesn't fit. Well, I had a score of producers under me who argued that, but you know. So anyway, um, that's it. I just, uh, I'm having fun and, uh, she's not. <laughs> CO, thank you for that. It's 1 800 55 1 800 5800. I'm looking ahead here to the next call. And he does not want to get revenge against his boss. He, he's calling in about what we would call the reality show involving evicted Fantasia from her house. Uh, Al, what would we be calling that? We're going to be calling that Bye-Bye Burino. <laughs> Bye-Bye Burino. one 800 5 800 Tom, look, someone else wants to call over the name of the show now. Christy, uh, what would you call that show? Hi, Tom. I'd call it Deadbeat Diva. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I love this job. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like is 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likus Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show now heard six days a week, Monday through Friday from 3 until 8 in the afternoon as you head home. Saturdays from 2 until 6 p.m. That's right, we now added a Saturday show, 2 until 6 p.m. Pacific Time on 97.1 FM Talk and blowmeuptom.com. Don't miss a minute. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. A lot of people have been laid off. A lot of people have been fired, downsized, right-sized, whatever mumbo-jumbo they want to use for getting rid of you. Some people are angry and feeling vengeful. Is that you? Mike of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, hey, how's it going, Tom? First uh, time listening. Going okay. Uh, well, yeah, um... I had vengeance on my boss. I was working at... And I was a delivery driver. I've never missed with the cash register ever, not even once. And he comes to me telling me that uh, he has suspicions that there's $25 missing in the cash register. So I let him know that, that you know, that I have no authority for me to get the key to the cash register because he's the only one that has it. So he fires me, and then he calls the cops, and... The cops asked me, oh, you took the money, you're going to have to pay for it. So I had to pay $25 out of my own pocket that I didn't steal from this guy. And I already had this little thing. I had went to jail for this stupid thing that I got caught with because I was helping this lady. And I got this into a big old little organ. But That's enough. Zero tolerance policy. <laughs> you're out! First, he names the company. <laughs> Which we had to bleep. But we let him go on. But of course, bleep him once. <laughs> shame on him. Bleep him twice. Shame on me. He used the F word as an adverb. Uh, you have to go to uh, myspace.com slash Tom like this and take a look at the list of all the words you can never say on the air under any circumstances. That's myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Let's say hi to Nancy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi there. How are you doing? Great. Hi. Well, I had an employer I worked for, and he used to harass everybody and get them to quit their jobs. I mean, he would have grown men walking and crying, and they would quit their jobs. So nobody would, like, unemployment. So he would harass these people. So finally it was my turn, and he harassed me so bad I had a breakdown at work. And then um, when the ambulance came and everything, he came back to make sure that he didn't get, he covered himself that he wouldn't get sued by me by suing him. But meanwhile, he was uh, giving furniture to other real estate offices and stuff. And they had already been investigated, so I ended up calling and having him reinvestigate and refined. So, and then I, I sued him and I won my case, and that was wow. like eight years ago. It was like eight years ago. I got really ill at work, but he made sure he came back to make sure he was covered. And the police was there, and the paramedics, and 
he had no bones about it, upsetting people and getting people to quit because he didn't want to blame unemployment. And I'd say that's a really a rotten kind of person to be, have around. Well, you're not kidding about that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Sal on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Hey. I'm doing hey. fine. Well, I just wanted to share my story. I mean, these um, disgruntled employees that, you know, seek revenge, well, a disgruntled employee took my dad 11 years ago. Um, what he had is he had issues at, at his company and uh, with management, and eventually that guy just snapped, left the company, then came back to the uh, plant and started shooting people. Unfortunately, my dad was one of those victims. And just hearing what how people, you know, get vengeful at, at uh, their companies, Sometimes it always brings back uh, memories of, you know, hearing, I mean, it sounds comical at times, but, you know, when people snap, things, you know, things happen to others. And, wow. you know, you're just kind of left to say, hey, you know, how did how did one deserve that when all you did was show up to work? Yeah. Well, look at all the people over the years who quit the post office and came back later on. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, again, when I went back to my company after people phoned me and told me, hey, you know, your dad got shot. And I ran out and I went to go take care of business with my family and all. And then I came back to my office because I really didn't know what to do. I was just kind of in a total cloud. And then someone in my office uh, just kind of made a jokely comment because it was on the news and everything. And they said, hey, did you hear someone went postal on, at this place? And all of a sudden they said, hey, you know, that was Sal's dad that got shot. Oh, she just kind of felt like Oh, great! You know, I mean, it's such it, it, it's a it's a term that's usually uh, that's loosely used, but in reality, when it really hits home, you start to think, hey, you know, when people again, when people snap, you just don't know what they're capable of doing. I mean, controlling your anger that's one thing, but uh, when you know when these people just go, just come in and just go berserk and end up doing stuff like this, it's kind of you're left to say, hey, you know, uh, what can you do? So, I mean, that's that's the story I wanted to share. I mean, it's been 11 years ago um, since that happened. But, uh, you know, it, it it seems to still happen. And, you know, I just, it just... It's just I think you're going to be seeing a lot more of it in the near future. I'm certainly not recommending it. Yeah, no, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. But, you know, employers have to kind of really consider people. People are human beings sometimes. But uh, as you mentioned earlier, yeah, the gun companies are still making money out there. But... Uh, you know, I hope, hope, hopefully in the future it's not in the wrong way. You know, that exactly. they're, they're making money. Exactly. Sal, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. This is Dave from Long Beach. Yes. Uh, I just thought I had to call and let you know uh, what's going on with my situation and uh, how I'm going to get back at my boss for doing what he did to me. Um, what he did was, was uh, we're working for a small company group of guys, guys I grew up with, uh, making thirty seven fifty an hour, great pay as many hours as, as we want. Well, our work started getting slow. Uh, two of the uh, guys that were on my boss's, uh, on my boss's, uh, on our company were his nephews. So uh, when work got slow, I was the first one to go. I said, go ahead and go ahead and get on unemployment. Um, that You know, he'll, he'll, he'll sign the unemployment papers off. Well, come to find out, uh, I filed for unemployment the same day. Get a check, got the max, which is 410 uh, a week. Uh, a week later, I got a, le a letter saying that I was li uh, lying and that uh, I got fired for fighting on the job. And uh, now the unemployment wants their $500 back. Oh, so, wow. Uh, so now I'm uh, working uh, temporary services for $8 an hour, and uh, my child support just kicked in. So after an eight-hour day, like I'm coming home now, I'm going to the office, and I'll uh, take home my $32, which uh, should buy me dinner tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it's a it's a horrible situation. Now, so now, I, uh, now, now. I ask people if they are vengeful. Are you? Excuse me. I ask people if they are vengeful, like vengeful. going to do something uh, in in revenge. Well, well, yes. Uh, we we do a lot of government uh, contracts, and I've already been uh, I've already gotten the car to somebody and spoke with somebody about the situation, and uh, it looks like I'm gonna begin back pay. Uh, for the, uh, the past two years, which is going to be a pretty big lump sum. So uh, uh, no, nobody knows at the company. I'm just waiting for that uh, day, to co day to come, and uh, he he'll get his then. 
Right, David, thank you. We have another David here on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's happening? Not much. Look, I, I, my point here, I'll just get right to it here, is I, I am an employer, and when I hear these stories about employees bitching about how they were let go and all this kind of stuff, in my, in my opinion, when you're an employer, you want to keep and hold on to the good employees. The ones that suck, those are the ones that you want to get rid of. So yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That is, uh, under normal circumstances, true. Uh, but today, uh, when someone gets fired for their job now, uh, yeah. for the most part, it has nothing to do with whether they're good or bad. For example, it could have to do with whether they make too much money. Okay, so what's the problem with that? I mean, so well, well, that's a well. Again, that that person didn't necessarily deserve to lose their job, and that person may feel wronged if they have shown up and done their job properly and exceeded expectations for years, and suddenly they get axed. Right, here's, here's the thing, though: if they're really doing a good job, and that they're making, if if the employer's paying them enough money, I uh, check this my point. If the employer is paying him X amount of money, then he thinks it's too much money, then it is too much money. Because a good employer is going to recognize that, hey, I'm paying this guy. But that doesn't mean the person deserves to be fired that, and deserves to be mistreated either. No, I'm not saying they don't, they don't need to be mistreated, of course. And that's not my point. My point is... I mean, remember, the, remember, the, uh, nobody put a gun on the employer's head and forced him to pay what he's paying in the first place. True, but, that, but that's when the economy was racing right along, right? Again, that's not... So who made that decision? The employer. And, but then again, now we're in a different circumstance. So if it's too much money, then they're not worth that now. They're not worth that amount of money now. They Will you say that when they fire you? Because, I, you know, I've talked to guys like you. Let yeah. me tell you something, pal. I've talked to guys like you who go around saying, Hey, you know what? I just think these people are pathetic. And then one day you find out that you're on the wrong end of the stick. I have been that way, Tom. I have been on that end of the stick. Yeah. I didn't... You may find yourself again there soon. This is the worst economy since the Great Depression. Uh, and, then, and then we'll see how fair you think it is. Outrageous. Listen to how arrogant he is. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You got that? Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.